Well, 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 college football has reached the halfway point. We're basically halfway there with the college football season. Well, I would say I'd make some midseason predictions, but I don't know about that just yet. I think I'm all. I think I may save it for next week. I think I may save those for next week. Um, today we got the news that Hawaii is joining the Mountain West as the eighth full-time member. Um, there will be some concessions that they get. They won't get the you know paid travel fees. The mainland, the Spectrum deal seems to be going away. So everything's looking good for the Mountain West. Now they'll need to find maybe one more member you know, to kind of make things a little bit better as far as scheduling goes in the future, you know, in basketball and, and football, you know, but everything, everything's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Um, this week, you know, week seven came and went, you know, Texas dominated Oklahoma in the Red River showdown, shootout, rivalry, whatever you want to call it, you know, only allowed three points, you know, yeah, Quinn Ewers didn't look the greatest in this game, but, hey, you know, the team still got the job done on defense, you know, and the offense, you know, when it was able to start clicking with Weisner and, and, and Gunnar Helm, you know, I mean, things started to click. Cam Scadaboo, on the other hand, you know, he just ran all over Utah. I'm telling you, he was on a tear on Friday night. Cam Rising, unfortunately, you know, has another injury to his leg, and he is basically just shut down again. He may get an eighth year, but at this point, you know, the jokes write themselves. It may be time to go put the fries in the bag, bro. It, it's about that time. Come on. It's time. You, you, you've you done enough in college. You know, you, you, you did what you needed to do in college. You know, it, it may be time to hang it up. Um, Oregon on Ohio State had a absolute thrilling game, you know, now Ohio State got caught, you know, late, the 12 men on the field type thing, but hey, it is what it is, and Oregon was able to outlast Ohio State, Dylan Gabriel just was on a tear, you know, the wide receivers and and the backs for Ohio State were on a tear, I mean, there was, it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and Ohio State, you know, Unfortunately, Will Howard decided to run at the very end, did a Dak Prescott and ran, you know, at the very end of this game, you know, with five seconds to go when you have to throw a Hail Mary down the field. But, you know, it's fine. Ohio State is still ranked in the top four anyway, so no bad losses here. Can't really say the same for the other three teams in marquee games this week. Um, for week eight, because again, Texas is going to face one of these teams. The other two will face off Bama, Tennessee, and Georgia. All oh, had to survive, basically. Bama had to survive a missed, you know, you know, a missed, you know, couple plays by South Carolina. A South Carolina pick at the end of the game, seal the deal. I mean, Bama was, you know, not looking too great. I mean, Mill Road. You know, through a couple picks in this game, there were some plays that Bama just could not get. It was rough. Tennessee had to survive, you know, in Florida. Grant Mertz is done for the year with an ACL tear. And Tennessee, you know, it just has not looked the greatest. Nico Imaliva, you know, it's not looked great. Dylan Sampson has probably been the only thing that Tennessee really has. Georgia, yeah, Carson Beck can throw up 400 yards all you want to, but when the defense is allowing – you know, Mississippi State to get back into this game and make this game a game, <laughs> you know something's wrong. So, yeah, this week, Bama and Tennessee, the third Saturday in October, somebody's going to leave with two losses. That's the big crazy thing. Somebody's going to leave with two losses. Kalen DeBoer and Josh Heupel, you know, are both going to be angry if they lose this game. Georgia has to face Texas, that Texas defense. It's a stiff cookie. It's a stiff cookie. It will not. I don't know if it will do what Alabama did, you know, and let up and allow Georgia to, you know, get back into the game. I just don't think that's going to happen. Georgia's going to have to bring their A game against Texas, you know. You know, and obviously Quinn, Quinn Ewers is still dealing, you know, with some of that injury pain, you know, because, again, he didn't look the greatest. But he played effective enough. But, you know, another week of healing and the horns – you know, could continue to rumble along and, you know, if they beat Georgia, that 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 isn't it for Texas because, again, Vanderbilt is actually good, you know. 
Um, it's not it, you know. But hey, the SEC schedule is it is no slouch for the Longhorns, you know. And so this game will be tough. But ultimately, I think Texas will take care of business and get the win against Georgia. Uh, Bama Tennessee, it, it's a it's a game that's just like it's a toss up at this point. Both these teams just do not scream playoff contender to me. But hey, we have twelve spots for a reason this year to keep teams like this in them. Uh, Kansas State, they were able to escape Colorado late. Bree Johnson and company were able to outlast Travis Hunter and the Buffs. I think Hunter got injured in this game, if not mistaken. Now this game was pretty late at night. You know, it wrapped up at the same time. Well, it didn't wrap up at the same time, but LSU Ole Miss took four hours, and you know, you know, Jackson Dart got picked off a couple times. You know, Garrett Nussmeyer, you know, was able to make the plays needed in OT. You know, Ole Miss had to kick a field goal. LSU came back and said, "All right, we scored a touchdown, and we win in this game." And Ole Miss has dropped another game, which they did not need to drop. And that again, that gives you two losses in SEC play. You don't want to have two losses in SEC play now. You don't want to have two losses. Okay. So LSU still in this thing. Um Ashton Janty, his Heisman run continues, another 200 yard campaign, another two touchdown campaign. He is continuing to rumble and, and stumble, you know, all the way to end zones and to the hearts of the Heisman voters. Now, a couple other teams, you know, that you may want to look out for, BYU, Clemson, Notre Dame, Iowa State, Army, and Navy. Yes, Army and Navy are ranked, but those other four that I mentioned, they are they are going along smoothly. Notre Dame with a big victory. Clemson dominated. BYU dominated. Iowa State dominated. Can't say the same for Penn State, Illinois, though. They, they kind of meandered, you know, against USC. Penn State did, but they were able to get the win in OT, and Illinois also had to go to OT with Purdue. And that leads to the that leads to one of the other big questions this week is we got a Friday night game involving the spoiler makers. Purdue. Oh yes. Purdue likes to bring their A game, as you we can tell over the years against ranked opponents. And Oregon, you know, sitting high and mighty after that win, you know, against Ohio State. Do 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 we get the spoiler makers on Friday night? Do we get the spoiler makers on Friday night? I would say. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, we get the spoiler makers on Friday night. Hudson Card and company have not looked the greatest all season, but hey, like I said, they brought their A game against Illinois. Uh, Miami, you know, they're, they're going to play Louisville. Louisville is no slouch. Virginia is no slouch either. So, you know, just because they're 4 and 2, just because Clemson's probably favored by like 20 points, does not mean that Clemson is going to, you know, you know, kind of just roll over, you know, just kind of, you know, blow them out by 40 points. I think that game will be pretty tough for Clemson. Nebraska, Indiana, do we get a seven-win Indiana? Indiana is continuing to roll. Again, they get the favorable part of the Big Ten schedule. They get a more favorable Big Ten schedule, you know, in Indiana. Hey, with the Rorge quarterback and the way this team has been rumbling, you know, they got Dylan Riola and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And the Cornhuskers, you know, they have that one loss. Should be a good game on Saturday. You know, those kickstart is Saturday. So I'd say Miami, you see a Miami can keep going and then watch um, Nebraska, Indiana. And of course, in the afternoon, the third Saturday in October, see what Alabama and Tennessee are going to do. And then you have Michigan, Illinois. Illinois, you know, again, they survived against Purdue, Michigan. You know, they're on their third quarterback at this point. I don't know what in the world's going to happen in this game. You know, Illinois, they are not a team to play around with this year, similar to Indiana. You know, and Michigan is going to have to bring their A game. They're going to have to bring their A game. You know, they have two losses already, barely ranked. You know, shouldn't even be ranked at all, to be quite honest with you. But, you know, the power of the Michigan brand, you know what I'm saying? I'd also pay attention to Notre Dame, Georgia Tech, maybe Texas A&M and Mississippi State, LSU, Arkansas in the late window. But, of course, you know you were here for Georgia, Texas. Oh, yes. Uh, going to be watching Georgia, Texas. And then, you know, Kansas State, West Virginia, I'm also going to be watching late. Uh, I know UCF, Iowa State is there, but UCF is just, you know, not that great. Iowa State, 
you know, again, they have snuck up to number nine in the country now. They are still unbeaten now. Um, Iowa State, you know, could do some damage. You know, we could have a really big 12, you know, if things go the way they go. SMU is also ranked, you know, in the top 20. And they could also do some damage, you know. So, you know, there are still storylines to go through as we get through the season. Um, next week, I'm going to bring you all my predictions, you know, my midseason predictions and everything like that. I think we're at the midway point of the season. I don't, I don't care. We're gonna, we're gonna do it at the end of October. I don't care uh, because it will be before the CFP, you know, releases their rankings and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do my midseason predictions then. Um, we'll have a thrilling, you know. There's a couple teams that are off this week, like Boise State and Pittsburgh. You know, Pittsburgh again. I really haven't mentioned them too much. You know, but again, Boise State. You know, they have Ashton Janty. But we'll talk about Pitt. And Boise State next week because we have a thrilling three day week of college football next week, you know. And of course, we have a thrilling Friday night slate, Saturday. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun time to see what the world goes on, you know. And I wonder, you know, again, this week is going to be interesting. The SEC race is going to, you know, separate itself a little bit. The Big 12, not so much. Big 10, not so much. ACC, not so much. There's definitely going to be separation in the SEC race this week. And if you don't think so, well, again, somebody of Bama, Tennessee, and Georgia may have two losses at the end of the day. One of those three teams, or maybe even two, are going to have three losses at the end of Saturday, which is insane to think about. So, yeah. That'll do it for me. Um, I will be at the Stars game tonight. I'll have some video, you know, maybe some photos, you know, some stuff from that game tonight against the San Jose Sharks. And I'll upload all that. Some other news that I want to share as well. This week in the North Football will now be a Tuesday night show. It will be, you know, basically when college football ends, you know, we'll have some filler, you know, in betwixt those dates. And then, you know, we'll come back. You know, each and every Tuesday night, starting February 25th, 2025, that is four months away, this weekend into football will return. Because there are preseason games in the NAL, um, I wanted to make a second update video in the winter, but it's like, no, nah, that's not going to happen now. So what I'm going to do instead is we're going to debut this week in the football on February 25th, 2025, and we'll go all the way to the middle of August which should take us through the IFL championship or maybe even the TAL championship. Um, yeah, so that'll do it for me. Um, again, I hope you enjoy the college football this week. We got games tonight, tomorrow, you know, as usual with the Tuesday night Conference USA nonsense. And, of course, Wednesday, Thursday, just going to be some good football all over the place. So until, until we meet again tomorrow night, Big Boy Sports is signing out, and I'll see you later.